I'm going to explain to anybody who's interested how I made my little easel trays. They're good for, you know, doing art stuff on. And you can even put a tablet on it, I guess, if you wanted to use the tripod trays for anything else. They are pretty sturdy. If you're going to put anything that's too heavy on it, please be mindful to counterweight it by putting perhaps a sandbag and then tying it to the back. So I'm going to tell you how I made one out of wood. And if you don't have use of power tools, that's okay because we can do one out of coreplast. Both of them are sturdy, both of them work. This might be easier for some people to make because you don't need a power tool or a saw. I bought this at Home Depot. So I have a few of these and I just wrote which tripod I use them with because all tripods are not created equal. They can be just a little bit different, and that will make a difference in some cases. But, um, as you can see, they just kind of stay there themselves. This one, however, I used more enforcement because it was kind of heavy. I made sure that they could do carry-ons, <laughs> so they could fit on my carry-on luggage. Actually, it's kind of leaning forward now this one is it's gotten a lot of heavy use and i would just have to really revive it by getting a new one of these or a longer one it's also a metal h that came with the coroplast when i bought it when you get your coroplast it's what, 20 by 24 inches, I think. So you can make your tray and you can make one or two top parts of the easel. That goes into the top of the shoe, goes there. Which you can take it off and still use it for your tilt board for watercolor. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. I can. So I bought this tripod at some thrift shop it's very lightweight, but it's sturdy and stable. This is Velcro on. I also use these clamps. This is an inch wide. You're going to cut five inches, one inch deep. In the center, make sure it's in the center. And then two and a half inches that way, and two and a half inches that way. For this next cut, hit eight inches wide. So from the center, we're going four inches right and four inches left. That will total eight. These extra pieces of wood, they press against, oops, they press against your tripod legs. They press against the back of your tripod, forcing it against the front. See? It's really good on this one, and it stays nice. I like where it's landed here. When you're adjusting it, before these are put on. You're going to have to hold it with one hand, but your other hand is going to be putting that wood where it should go, and your knees are going to be under this supporting it because you're going to set your tripod up to where you can sit in a chair, and this can rest on your knees. If there's one person doing it, you can do this alone. You will need something to put on top of this while you're having heavy clamps to hold it back here because otherwise it pulls it up like that. You don't want that. When I used wood glue, after I marked off where I knew each one would go. You don't need this when you use coroplast. See the coroplast one? This pink stuff here, it's non-slip, non-skid stuff. So nothing slides off. These are clamps. You might need help with those. Just saying, 
This is Gorilla Wood Glue. Boy, this works fantastic. And this is what you use to attach this. But I do keep this on it too. And if I wanted, I could have two trays. I could have some paints down here and some paints here or water here. This is wood, this is coroplast. But you could have two trays. Please remember, if you're going to have a lot of weight on one section, just counterweight with something on the back like a sandbag, and it doesn't have to be anything too drastic. And then tie it near the bottom so that nothing can tip forward. That's the last thing you want. And like I said, so what if you don't have wood? As long as you can find something that's fairly durable, kind of thin, so I know that you can do like cool modifications on these, but this would be your basic. So I have like five different tripods. I've gotten some really good ones at thrift shops. You're going to have some relatives who have them who just don't even use them, maybe. Grandparents, aunts and uncles. And I've had it a lot of places. <laughs> and it's a very cool little thing to have. My studio, which I call this my moving studio, can easily be picked up and transported from one corner to the next. And like I said, because I'll travel a lot with my family, uh, hey, I got my studio ready to go with me. Doesn't take up too much space. And I like that. Makes me feel comfort. Um, real quick, so I just got something in the mail. Uh, we, I have a busy day today, but I wanted to quickly throw this in. So I have this piece of cardboard. A book came in it, and I just duct taped it. And I'm just going to cut it because actually this would work too as a table. So remember the starting point, which is kind of a basic generic guideline for making these. The center was about right here. I eyeballed it. It's 8.5 inches to this in the center, to find the center, to find the center of the Tootsie Roll. So let me measure eight and a half inches. And boy, that looks like it right there. Right there. That's the center. So once we find the center, two and a half inches to the right and two and a half inches to the left. That makes five inches. We want to cut that out. Just be careful. I used this. I would turn it around. I would be on that side and I would cut that way. I would cut that way and then down like that. Okay, so I'm going to go and cut this. I really already did, but the camera wasn't on and I thought it was. So, boop, boop, boop. Okay, on wood, having one inch is perfect. On cardboard or coroplast, I like to go in a little farther. Okay, let's get to cutting here. And don't cut any fingers off using this box cutter or whatever the heck you got. You're going to want to get it done fast, so that's how accidents happen. Take your time. To start from the center, which is here, I'll just go whoop. One, two, three, four. So that's eight inches. I do a lot of yard work and tinker with woodwork. So my hands are pretty atrocious. It's really sad. There, that'll do it. Eight inches wide. Because you can always make it a little bit bigger, but you can't make it a little bit smaller. Go four inches that way and four inches that way. Now. Let's cut this and see how it goes. As usual, don't cut your fingers off and don't sever an artery. Don't be tempted to tear it, remember, because I was just tempted to tear it. I think I'll take this one off. These are two inch binder clips. Just helps with support. Now, here's the process of it. You put it on like that, well, it hangs like that like a limp noodle. Wooden pieces are for on the back of the wooden one. It's pressing it to hold it up like that. It's pressing against here. 
and pressing against here to hold it up. We don't have that. But with cardboard, that's okay, because with cardboard, you can put the flap underneath it long enough to rest in the joints. And we can use binder clips down there and binder clips up here. And just put your cardboard, the piece of cardboard underneath it. But still, that's pretty much how it's going to work. You know, just even without that, even without putting a little flap underneath it to give it more support. Look at that. We want it to be level, though. So that's your concept of how to do this. If you're going to use it for watercolor, like was my intention for my easels, for my tripod easels, for the most part. I wouldn't want water to be making it soggy. Not that I plan on dumping a ton of water on stuff, but it is watercolor and it will run down or it will spill. So I would cover it with duct tape. Or since it's cardboard and it was dirt cheap or free, you know, just use it until you can't use it anymore. And there you go. You can also use this for a pattern. That's pretty much it. Okay, laters.